Hey everyone, this is Dr. Neil. I hope you're feeling good today. I'm feeling pretty good myself. And I wanted to discuss my perspectives and my view on three-dimensional scarring and wear and tear that occurs on the face of the body after acne or any other inflammatory process as well. If you're here to learn about dark marks or red marks, I'll put a link on this video that will get you to the video I did last time called Understanding Dark Marks and Red Marks. For today, we're going to talk about three-dimensional scarring, wear and tear, and we'll start to talk about aesthetics in general and my perspective on this very emotional issue. So let's get into it. Much like the dark marks conversation we had before, many people come to me with their concerns of three-dimensional scarring while they're still having occasional bumps or very tiny bumps or persistent acne in general. And my response to them is usually this. If you continue to get either small bumps, large bumps, or just occasional bumps once a month or even once every couple months, you will continue to put yourself at risk for three-dimensional scarring. So you see, as the old scars are trying to soften and become less visible, new scars are forming. And thus, in this situation, you will have the appearance of three-dimensional scars forever. There's really only one stepwise approach to handle three-dimensional scars. This was also true for dark marks. And that is to achieve total inactivation of the skin. And what I mean by inactivation is having zero tiny bumps and having zero occurrences of occasional bumps. If you can get to that level of inactivation, then you have a chance at treating your three-dimensional scars. Step two, once you're fully inactivated, time itself will heal or soften rather three-dimensional scars if and only if you're not creating new ones and your skin is healthy as far as its oil content and its general texture. Step three is you can accelerate time's natural healing process both at home with products and with a professional using procedures. Um, there are many types of products and many types of procedures that are possible for this conversation. But before we get into that conversation, let's go back in a stepwise approach to number one and two. If you feel your skin is inactivated and you feel it's time to work on the scars, feel free to send me a photo and I will look at it in high focus to let you know if it's as inactivated as I believe it needs to be before you go to work on the scars. Um, the majority of people that come to me concerned with scars still have some activity that is either unknown to them or that they're disregarding because of the scar because the scars are more troubling to them. But let me use this video to emphasize one point. If you're more concerned about the scars than even the tiniest bumps, you will accidentally leave yourself with scars forever. You have to reshift your focus to the activity. In this program, the Acne Boot Camp is to stop all activity and then we can either let time heal both dark marks and three-dimensional scars or we can accelerate time's process. But we can't even get into the conversation of dark marks or three-dimensional scars until a person has zero bumps and zero fear of bumps. That level of inactivation is the focus of Acne Boot Camp. And it should also be the focus of anyone watching this who is concerned about their three-dimensional scars. Whether you do acne boot camp or not, if you focus on your scars while still slightly or occasionally active, you risk having scars for the rest of your life. And that is the point of this video. Now the rest of this video will be for those who have proven using magnification, magnifying mirrors or very highly focused photos that they have zero activity and they don't get it occasionally once a month either. Um, at home, any product that is exfoliating of your skin will soften up scars. There's a post in my blog 
entitled Enlarged Pores. And in this post, I described how exfoliating or taking off the top layers can make an opening or a cone or a hole on the skin look, appear smaller because you're taking out the wide mouth part of it, which is the top. Kind of like many geographic features like the rim of a volcano or the, or the ridge of a canyon, the top layers of skin will elevate on the ridges or the rim, creating shadows and creating a less aesthetic appeal to three-dimensional scars. So any type of exfoliation, whether it be chemical, mechanical, whether it's done here in the program or outside the program, will help three-dimensional scars in their appearance to soften them. In this practice, we use time to heal three-dimensional scars, but we also can accelerate time with one of the kits I developed years ago called the Exfoliation Kit for Sensitive Skin. At this time, it's only available for members because it does require a lot of communication and I need to make sure clients have a certain skill level before they engage in some of these deeper exfoliating activities. You need good weaponry and you need good skill and the combination of both really creates the magic. There are also many procedures that soften up three-dimensional scars. Think of them in a few basic categories. Some are exfoliating, removing top layers of skin, and others, they work from underneath to plump up the collagen from underneath to almost press out the crater. Kind of like in a, kind of like in the old movie Superman when he's pushing up the earth in the earthquake. That's how you can think about it. So <laughs>
So my recommendation is take it slow. If it, if it costs a little more money to take it slow and non-invasive, and then eventually you get to the laser anyway one day if you're, if you're badly scarred, I still think that's worth your money to take it slow. Because anyone that jumps in to the heavy scar procedures is taking a real risk in my opinion.